You are lifeguard and spot a drowning child 30 meters along the shore and 50 meters from the shore to the child. So if we look at the graph below, that means you would be at the origin, 0, 0,0 comma 0. And if we go 30 meters along the shore and 50 meters from the shore, the child would be here where the ordered pair is 30 comma 50. You run along the shore for a while and then jump into the water and swim from there directly to the child. You can run at a rate of four meters per second and swim at a rate of 0 0.9 meters per second. How far along the shore should you run before jumping into the water in order to save the child as quickly as possible? Round the answer to two decimal places. So going back to the graph, let's label the segment along the x-axis x. This should be the distance you run. And let's label this slanted segment y the distance you would swim. We also need to form the right triangle here on the right. So let's go ahead and construct the two legs. We have a leg here and we have a leg here. We know the long leg is 50 meters. And notice how the shorter leg would be 30 minus x meters. And now to solve this problem, we'll be using the distance equals rate times time formula. But because we're trying to minimize the time, we need to solve the equation for t by dividing both sides by r which gives us time t is equal to distance divided by rate. And in our case, we're going to have the time t is equal to the run time plus the swim time. Let's let t equal t sub r plus t sub s. And now using the graph, let's go ahead and set this up. The total time t is equal to the run time, where the run time is equal to the run distance divided by the run rate which is equal to x meters divided by four meters per second, giving us x divided by four, and then plus the swim time is equal to y meters divided by the rate of 0 0.9 meters per second, which gives us y divided by 0 0.9. From here, we need to write t as a function of just one variable. We will write t in terms of x. Before we do this, then notice how dividing by 9 tenths is equivalent to multiplying by 10 ninths. So let's write this as t equals, let's write this as 1 fourth x and then plus 10 ninths y. And now let's work on writing y in terms of x using the right triangle. Well, we know from the Pythagorean theorem that 50 squared plus the square of 30 minus x must equal y squared, or y squared must equal 50 squared plus the square of 30 minus x. To solve for y, we take the square root of both sides of the equation. And because we know y is positive, we only need the principal square root, which gives us y is equal to the square root of the quantity 50 squared plus the square of 30 minus x. Let's also write this using a rational exponent and simplify 50 squared plus the square of 30 minus x. This gives us y equals the quantity x squared minus 60x plus 3,400 raised to the power of 1 half. Which means we can now write the time function as t equals 1 fourth x plus 10 ninths times the quantity x squared minus 60x plus 3,400 raise the power of one half. In order to minimize the function now, the next step is to find the critical numbers, which is where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. So now let's find t prime, which is the derivative of t with respect to x, which is equal to the derivative of one fourth x, which is one fourth, and then we'd have plus 10 ninths times the derivative of the quantity x squared minus 60x plus 3,400 raised to the power of one half, which is going to require the chain rule so we have one half times the quantity x squared minus 60x plus 3,400 raised to the power of one half minus one, which is negative one half, and then times the derivative of x squared minus 60x plus 3,400, which is two x minus 60. And now we need to determine where t prime is equal to zero or undefined, which is a pretty complicated process. So in this case, we're actually gonna graph this derivative function to determine where it's equal to zero. 
which I've already done here. This is the graph of the derivative function shown below. Notice the derivative is equal to zero at approximately 18.45, which is a critical number we need. Also notice how the derivative function changes from negative to positive when x is approximately 18.45, which means our time function changes from decreasing to increasing at the x value of approximately 18.45, which does verify we do have a relative minimum at this location. So if we set the derivative equal to zero, this gives us x is approximately 18.45, and this would be meters. Notice how this is the distance that you would run along the shore before jumping into the water to swim to rescue the child in order to minimize the rescue time. So as a complete sentence, you should run 18.45 meters along the shore before jumping in the water. I hope you found this helpful.